What's up, peeps? Welcome to another edition of Hip Hop Head. My name is Julian Williams. All right, I got a review for for a independent artist or unsigned artist by the name of Devon Hendrix. Um, don't know much about Devon Hendrix. Um, he actually sent me a message um, and asked to review his. Um, I believe it's a mixtape. Review his mixtape, Joe Chill World. And I'm one of the guys I support independent artists. And if an independent artist approached me and asked if you know, and ask me personally, hey, can you review my album? I will review it. Um, try to get this channel rolling. Um, but, you know, I'll review, um, I'll review stuff from independent artists. They asked me to review it. And um, he asked me to review it, review his um, mixtape, Joe Chill World. And, you know, I checked it out. Um, basically, what I can say about, about Devon Hendrix is he's very... I want to say he's very honest. He's a brutally honest artist. Um, he has good production, very good production, good beats. Um, he's a lot of his stuff has seemed to seem to have been very slow tempo. With him rapping over, rapping at you know very fast pace, you know above it, and you know even some of the slow and solemn beats. But then you know he had some mid tempo tracks on as well. So started off Sap at School was the opening for it, and is and that's the perfect way to open you know mixtape of that of that nature, to where you have you know slower tempo slower tempo beats and you're rapping over them, but you want to start off with more of a mid tempo, and I will admit he it started off with an acapella verse or an acapella part, um, part of his verse, and you know and I'm one of those guys that I like acapella and rap. But but I don't think he really f meshed with the acapella sound because in Bully, the second song, he didn't really mesh with the acapella there. It's, he seemed to have sounded off beat um, when he was acapella. But Sabbath School, you know, you, you can hear that brutal honesty. He's not necessarily, you know, cocky or arrogant. He's just honest. Um, but Sabbath School was a good way to open the, to open the mixtape. Um, Bully, another another um, good another good one. Um, like I said, the acapella acapella at the end. Um, the third was Neon School. Neon School, I thought, well, you know, I like Neon School. Neon School was was pretty was pretty good. Um, Neon School, I think, it was a little more. You know, he kind of you know, and that's when I was able to see his lyrical and um, his rapping ability as well, to where he changed the flow. Um, multiple times in the song, you can hear him in the middle of a verse and he's changing his flow um, every um, few rhyme, um, kind of like what Jay did on Reasonable Doubt, um, changed his flow up you know, on certain rhymes and changed the variation of what he was doing. Um, so Neon School was pretty good. I'm not much of a fan of the beat going on for another minute after the song, but you know, I, I let it slide. Um, on this one, but that's when I kind of started to notice he had, he kind of had a beat going um, after the song, but it, it is reminiscent of some of the 90s, partially of 90s hip hop. 90s hip hop, you did have the beat going on a minute or two after the song from time to time. Uh, re response Neon School pretty was really good. It was a uh, it seemed to be a freestyle over over um, a beat. It just seemed to be very um, it sounded a lot like improvisation. Over it, um, he did very well on that one. Um, you know, so I, I like that one. Operation Kill Stormfront, um, it's pretty good. I like, I liked it. Um, you know, but you know, it's but I just kind of felt a little forgettable, but it worked. Trophy Kids, you could hear an influence of Crucial Conflict on that one, just by how he was rapping. Um, you could just hear the the Crucial Conflict type of. Um, type of um influence on him and maybe crucial conflict didn't have much of influence on him but i thought he i thought the way he sounded um at the very beginning just was very reminiscent of crucial conflict and that midwest mid excuse me midwest hip-hop sound that you know bone thugs and harmony and and crucial conflict and even twi early twister had um, when they would you know when they would rap over certain beats and they would rap fast and then they would you know have different rhyme variations um, different types of uh, lyrical cadences, and they wouldn't, and they would actually ride the beat, you know, just rapping, you know, rapping fast and 
and sometimes you know just you know just speaking fast to the beat. Um, that's basically what he was doing on Trophy Kids. Um, after Trophy Kids, Omega Weapon, yeah, Omega Weapon, um, decent track. Then there was um, the prom song, Montebello High School Prom, something along those lines. Um, one, of the, I like, I actually liked it. it was very, seemed to have, be very laid back. Another honest track on there. Um, actually entertaining as well. It was a long, you know, it was a long track, and I'm not a fan of these six minute rap songs. Um, of solo artists, unless they're, you know, posse cuts. But overall, it was, a, it was another good one. And a shining moment, I thought it should have ended at number nine with Power of Madonna. Um, I believe it was a Janet Jackson sample. And I think that A sounded like it had kind of a little bit of a Michael Jackson sample. You can kind of hear a little bit of a mothering, kind of like in, off the, in the Off the Wall album, off of I Can't Help It, number nine. Um, at the very beginning of the song, but you kind of just hear that muttering a little bit. I don't know if he used that sample or not, but it did sound like it to me. And then number nine, I believe, I'm pretty sure it was a Janet Jackson sample on Power of Madonna. And I thought it should have ended at Power of Madonna. Um, Power of Madonna was, I thought, seemed to be kind of like that standout moment. Um, along with um, re response to Neon School and Neon School, I thought it was just that standout moment to where it just should have ended right there. Um... But you know we did get you know we did get a tenth song, but you know I thought the tenth song was a little too long. But overall, I thought it should end at Power of Madonna, which was actually um, one of my favorites on this mixtape. So he had good production, he, lyrical creativity, um, the ability to um, show him talent, being able to um, be able to produce. The only problem was. There's there there's just like one or two songs that you know he could have done without. I'm not gonna hold that against him. It didn't have a mainstream sound. I'm not gonna hold that against him neither. Um, but he's shown lyrical promise, creativity, um, shown shown that he can um, helm his own production, and you know the beats beats were pretty good. Um, the beats you know sounded different. He didn't necessarily have much of a direction. He just it was just him rapping and, he was, and it was a lyrical. You know, pretty much a, not necessarily a lyrical, but a creative showcase. So with a creative showcase, where you know somebody's bringing their A game, and more than likely, um, I think can do much, could probably do much better. I'm actually gonna give this mixtape four and a half mics, four and a half mics, based off of creativity, um, you know, creativity and production. And I think that creativity and production can bring you a long way. And also he's shown the ability to change and vary and vary up the way he raps. The way he um his delivery, his delivery just changes throughout the entire mixtape. So I'm really gonna give this dude four and a half mic out of five mics. And this is higher than I give most mainstream artists, and it doesn't have a mainstream sound at all. He does, you know, he's used a couple samples, but just overall, I think he did very well on this one. I'm gonna put the link below the video so you guys could so you guys could check it out. This is very talented, so Devon Hendrix, four and a half out of five. So my peeps, I'm out of here. Hip hop head, peace.